Hey viewers, welcome. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Renewalism Show. So glad that you guys are back and welcome to all the new viewers because as I understand the show is great, gaining momentum and why not because the book has been launched day before yesterday and a lot of people are getting to read the reviews and some of uh, our readers, some of our listeners are also readers now. So be tuned in, in case you want to pick up a cockpit, it is at uh, renewalism.com. Renewalism stands to become a movement in times to come and the Renewalism show is to spark that intent. Now, you know, for those of you who are joining in today for the first time, Renewalism, as you'd see in the runner below, is going to be a big movement because veganism is a big movement and veganism does not even concern itself with human consciousness. It concerns itself with our consciousness with respect to animals. And uh, here we're talking about our consciousness with respect to how we treat ourselves, the habits that we have bred into our society and into our social conditioning. And uh, what is it that that has impacted the planet is what we've been looking at over the last so many years. In the last few months, we've been looking at the change of habits and how that has impacted the world differently, how the air is cleaner and uh, the dolphins are back in the waters, how relationships are getting better and people are starting to introspect and telecommuting and all of that. And every day I have a guest with me uh, who speaks about, uh, I mean, we are in conversation about one of these aspects, one of these habits. So yesterday we had uh, Coach C.K. Arora and we were talking about conscience and uh, how desperation and conscience uh, are, are um, always at loggerheads with each other. Today we're going to talk about another more interesting thing, I believe, because it involves a lot more people. It definitely involves you. The subject is to buy or not to buy. That is the question. Because we are all buyers. We are consumers. In one of the shows, we quoted a certain Guru Pranachandra who strings together, his lecture strings together the book Renewal. Guru Pranachandra said that the renewalist will overthrow the consumerist. Now, today we have with us Praveen Shekhar from Chennai. And Praveen is a very interesting person to listen to. So uh, apart from the fact that he runs multiple businesses, he's an internationally acclaimed speaker, he, he's a very interesting person to hear. And so I'm not going to come in your way as I bring Praveen uh, Shekhar on stage. And we're going to start talking about the facet of purchasing. That's Praveen. Not only does he sound interesting, he looks very interesting too, doesn't he? Say hi. <laughs> hi, Dad. Good to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on this show. Now, you are an outlier marketer, as uh, yeah. that's how you're best known. And I'm here to quote uh, Guru Pranachandra once again in the context of uh, uh, what he writes uh, as a habit. It's called Cut Object Dependency. And I'm going to read off the book. He says, a person's habit is not determined by how much he has, but by how much he needs. Now, what do you say to that? I mean, I know you're from Chennai and uh, people from South generally have very simple lifestyles. I can make out your simplicity with all the books you have behind you. <laughs> Jux part or all yours. How do you how do you think that people can need less? Can they? Absolutely. Now, I'm a marketer. And the first thing I need to tell you is the difference between a need and a want. Now, I'm going to give that with an example here. What do you see here, Sandeep? I see a spray. A, a spray. Now, what's the? it's a Wallini spray. Now, if I have a backache or somebody ache, then my need yeah. is to alleviate the pain. Now, right. when I look at alleviating that pain, I can go for a massage. I can take a tablet. I can use a spray. I can have my daughter jump over me. Right? But... <laughs> The need is to alleviate the pain. The wants are so many. And even with that, if it's a spray, then what kind of a spray do I go at? Do I collect all possible sprays and then test myself out? No. But that is what most of us end up doing. You will have to look at it from a culture perspective that our generation at least grew up in a culture of 
very limited means, both mentally as well as financially. It was a savings culture. It was to do yeah. more with whatever we had. The new shirt that we used to get was once for Diwali, or Diwali as in the north. Maybe right. one more for your birthday. So we learned to live with less. And right. suddenly when we uh, get the money, and then we realize that the possibilities are endless, we just keep on going. We just keep on going. Forget the north and the south and um, the east and west. It's all mixed up now because it's all the digital world. It's what are these influencers that are coming in? Now, I'm an outlier marketer. When I advise my clients, the, the same mentality as with purchasing comes over here where they say, I need more clients. I need scale. I need growth. They said, why? What is your business for? What is it that you need? You can't look at someone else who's scaling past because they are in a different point in time in their life or in their business. And you can't do a direct comparison at that point, but that is what is happening now. And I would love to give an example of what happened in China up to at least 15, 20 years ago. The bulk of the purchasing was covered in plain white box or plain white covers. There was no branding, nothing, right? One of the attributes that we can take off is when there is hardly anything to attract, then you only go ahead and buy what you need and then go on. You don't get enamored by right. one particular logo on the cover. Oh, she's got something from that. I've got to go get something from that. That is completely off when everything is not hidden but blinded. When you go in to purchase, you go in, you, we used to go in with a list and we tick that list and then come back and there's no looking left or looking right. Now we just go to shop as a hobby. We just walk in. So uh, where do we keep stuff? What happens? Right. So Morning. as as individuals, we need to realize what's a need and what's a want. Now, I'm an average normal human being. So whatever, Sandeep, you're accusing the, the general population of, I'm a part of it. And I'm equally guilty uh, when you look at the book. <laughs> right, or, to, 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 to each his own. To each his own is what or her own, as I would uh, look at it. But uh, my take on the book and the topic is different. As we continue the conversation, I'll be telling you a lot more. But to all the viewers and listeners, yeah. focus more on renewalism, do an audit. Take stock. Whatever I have, does it fulfill my need or a want? And if it is fulfilling the need, keep it. If it's fulfilling a want, just keep one or two and leave the rest. Um, awesome. that, is, that is something that I would look at taking an audit ourselves. And that is something I would need to do myself. Back wow. to you. In fact, to, to, to just take off on that word, audit, it's such a beautiful word and such a powerful word. Uh, the way I see it in the book, uh, what he says is that go through your closets and you go through your attic and all those uh, places and you see where you find something that has a vibrational, emotional connect. It's got an emotional with you that you audit as something that you will keep and you remove the rest. So uh, that's a methodology that he suggested for the audit in the book. And uh, that, that's really interesting. Uh, just to just to complete that subject of China, which was very interesting that you brought it up. Uh, you know, he says that that is a long and short of global economics. Again, I'm reading from the book. And the simple means to reverse any economic trend, not politics, not war, not demand supply or fancy statistics, mere ego control. So uh, I'd like to hear from you a little about this subject uh, to uh, Praveen, because, you know, as as you said, you, you me, all our viewers, we, we are all uh, the same, uh, the same grains of salt. And we all have our egos and we all want things because it it satisfies an emotional need. Now, 10 minutes later or 10 years later, that emotion is completely knocked out. And that's the time when you want to audit and throw it away. But how do you handle that ego when it just comes up? I want that. Walk away. <laughs> yeah, again? <laughs> walk away. <laughs> walk away, yeah, yeah, walk away. Now, Don't there are... Fans. There are, there are I would split your question into two. One is the consumer me and one is the marketer me. For the consumer me, and this is a tip that I read recently, um, which is to keep two wallets. One is 
your physical wallet, which has the money and the credit card. But when you look at something and you have a desire, the ego says, hey, get it. That shows power. That shows uh, something else. Uh, and this is a recent ah. point for me. You decide whether there is a need or a want. And if it is just a want, park that money mentally in the second wallet and move on. Wow. Right? And not my learning. I love reading. I love picking up. And that is something that I got from the book Renewalism. I'm a part of a couple of book clubs, Sandeep. I'm digressing, but I'll come back to your point. When we have four or five people reading the same book, and when we discuss about what I got out of it, each one, all of us read the same book, but each one got something different out of it. Right. So basically, somebody coming in from manufacturing uh, thought about it and picked up the manufacturing part. We had a technologist, we had uh, um, a researcher, and then we had a marketer. And just from one book, there's so much more. Answering the second part of your question, I am going to take up the role of a marketer, which is cut object dependency. That's where the ego comes in. Hey, I need more growth. I need more customers. I need more part. But do I really need more? Can I not go deeper in building relationships with five to 10 key clients? Yes, we will go ahead and do right. a lot more. But can I not go deeper, build relationship, maybe cross sell, upsell, but end of the day, adding value. Coming back to your question, it's just the ego. That guy has 1,000 clients. I need to have 1,000 clients. But he's not doing what you are doing. And there is quite some difference here. Yeah. So as a consumer, I need to walk away. I have those two wallets. But as a marketer, I have to look at a deeper connect. What more can I do? And this is I love your two I love your two wallets. Uh, we have uh, Minu here. In fact, I have uh, Saloni here who's... Uh, uh, adopted the simplistic thread uh, very perfectly. Two meals a day, clothes to wear, don't need anything. And then we should not keep anything. Now, uh, Saroni, to your point, that's exactly what uh, we'd say. That if you can walk away from not needing anything, you're, you're into that road to nirvana, which is the purpose of life. You, you're, you're here to get liberated. So fantastic. Minu uh, has a very interesting uh, comment. Uh, meanwhile, a uh, lot of appreciation Praveen for the needs and wants very well explained. Minu says that uh, post COVID crisis, uh, you may be able to see that in your screen there, but I'll read it out. Products positioning has to capture both the need and the want. Business has to find ways to reach the consumer at an emotional level. So to deliver value with compelling persuasion is the trick. So nobody better than that to, to talk about it, uh, Praveen, over to you. My first answer is to Saloni. You are absolutely right. I am a high altitude Himalayan trekker, Sandeep, connecting to the last, last part of your book. And what do we do when we go on uh -huh. trek? Just one bag, one tent, and um, the only access to, um, uh, to hygiene would be the morning uh, brushing the teeth but everything else other than that you pretty much have a team that gives you food morning noon and night you have some snacks that you carry and you, you have two uh, shirts two pants and of course one jacket what more do you need nothing no electronics no connection and a complete new set of friends that you make that is bliss waking up to the sun and the Himalayas up there you don't need anything more all right um and That's to me question Cut object dependency. That is the habit that uh, uh, I, I picked up from uh, Sandeep's book. Cut the old needs to give way for the new to enter. And I watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of series. I have this Dialogue Diaries commonplace book. And this is a dialogue from the last episode of Mahabharat that was aired. The whole family, we watched it. So for the future to come in, the past needs to go, which is what I call cut. The object in the cut object dependency, if you ask me, it's not a physical thing. It is the thought, pain, bad experience, etc. that we tend to carry on, the baggage that accumulates over time. That is also a significant object that we let go. Why are we buying now? Because we had a positive at that point. And that is now manifesting itself in a different manner. Dependency, oh, old. 
for the sake of it. This is how it was. But I, when we were kids, we never used to have that. As a few more, so I am interpreting the cut object dependency uh, as that, and the object dependency can be cut by you yourself, following your ego, or the environment will cut it for you, like COVID. Because whatever happened in the past is not going to happen. None of us have spent significantly the last two to one and a half months, right? The only thing we've spent is on love true, and affection true. in the family, which was good enough for us to live through. So, Minu, true. you are absolutely right. We are at a state as a marketer, as a consumer. I have a choice. What do I need to do? Do I need to spend more? No, I can live with what I have. No movies, no malls, no restaurants. It was forced on me. And we completely, as humans, adapted to the new normal. So why cannot renewalism, not the whole of it, at least some parts of it, be something that we can adopt? Uh, because that is how change happens one by one. Or in this case, a drastic, but we still have to change one by one. Uh, and you know, you might remember there was this question that was asked to the guru during the talk in this uh, very section, which was which was interesting because to me. It alluded to uh, a method of bringing in that habit, and that was about fasting. You know, cutting the object dependency on the object of food itself, which is so integral to our lives. And I, I would imagine that if one can uh, fast even even once a week, one would uh, give the subconscious methodology of uh, understanding that it doesn't have to be what you want all the time. And you can get by even without uh, the kind of shock that COVID gave us. You can get by with less. Uh, what's your take on this? Do you fast, Praveen? As an aside, yes, I do, um, but not as regularly as my grandfather used to, because I grew up in a joint family, and every 15 days there was a fasting. Everything it had a religious aspect to it, which pushed me away from it. But when you look at it, the same thing is there in Japan, the same thing is there across all religions because the body needs to regenerate. There are some aspects that uh, needs to be done. So I, I would interpret it as the physical for uh, stomach fasting, but also from a mental fasting perspective. And at some parts, and I'm going to quote an example here of Thomas Alva Edison. As you know, he is pretty much the number one in terms of the patent holder. He holds over thousands of patents in 1914. Half of his laboratory, 10 huge buildings, caught fire and started burning, chemicals and all that. And uh, this was in a town in New Jersey. It was burning brightly. Eight fire trucks at that point were there, but then chemicals, so they couldn't do anything. So what uh, Thomas did is called his son Charles and said, go bring your mom and family and friends because all the chemicals were having a, a firework-like part. His son was upset, saying it's burning. He said, yeah, I have no control over it, but look at the lights. Let everybody come and enjoy it. Right? And then the next day, he started back. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm connecting both. That sometimes it happens, sometimes you've got to, but mental and physical fasting is, is always good for you. Uh, as, as they wow. say here, langanam parama uchadam. That's a Sanskrit or a Tamil saying. Uh, Langanam Paramahashada means fasting is the best medicine. <laughs> wow. See, that, that's the wisdom that's captured in this book. We, we know it from uh, ancient times. We've just lost it in this modern lifestyle. And even, even this modern lifestyle, uh, you know, when you bring up Edison, I think that connects it so beautifully because he, he is, and that's why he is uh, the one who, who brought this uh, huge a revolution in uh, technology and lighting and GE and everything. And uh, as, as, a, as a family person, he just enjoyed the simple pleasures of life and made the best out of uh, uh, the worst circumstances. Phenomenal example. Fantastic, really. We have a very interesting question here uh, from um, uh, Anadelia. She said, what advice would you give teenagers who are always the target of marketing? <laughs> I would call my generation, I'm 45, my generation to be in the middle. We have to adhere to tradition. We have to also cater to the youngsters. And the current generation, 
uh, is actually much smarter. They know what to do. They know how to do. It's just our generation, as with any generation that has teenage kids, uh, has a communication problem. But then uh, they know and they discern very well. In their case, all we need to do is capture the influencer there. And if the influencer gets into the renewalism mode or the minimalist mindset, the rest follows suit. Mm -hmm. And that is what I would do. That would be, uh, so I know my, uh, to an extent, my kids' friends and who's the key influencer. So if I really need to get something done, I know where to go. And direct conversation is not going to work. It has to be around. <laughs> uh, but end of the day, we would need to get that message across. But, uh, you know, since, since you're part of the industry integral to that, what do you think that brands can do to to get a little more sensitive about uh, how they are uh, misusing emotion? They just have to be genuine because the kids these days are extremely smart. If you try uh, to outsmart them, it's not going to happen. They want people wow. to be genuine. They want brands to communicate directly. And if there is any, uh, as it is going to this generation, in our generation, there was a huge amount of gray. Now that gray is coming down, it's either black or white. You cannot be in the middle. And so for brands, right. it has to be direct communication, communication in their line. And I'll give you a simple example here of old school marketers. I'm going to give a story. I'm a raconto or Sandeep. I love collecting stories. When World War II happened, they moved back to the older uh, generals from World War I who were successful, and they started digging trenches. There is a huge line called the Maginot Line where they just did trench warfare, and they had trenches, and they were ready for the Germans to come. The Germans flew over them and bombed. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you are trying to connect with the teenage generation of today, you will need to be genuine and you need to speak in their language. A simplest example, connecting World War II um, to right now, uh, you've seen, you visited YouTube, Sandeep. You've been on YouTube. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times have you skipped the ad? Almost always. Right. Old school marketers try to build a story, try to build it through and give the message in the 38th second. They only have five seconds for this generation. If you can right. communicate what you right. need to do in five seconds, then they will listen more. And Zomato is one of the very few companies that have got the five second marketing rule. So you've got to be okay. brief, you've got to be direct, and you've got to go ahead with Wow. Yeah. Fantastic, Praveen. That is, that is really insightful from all sides. And uh, it's amazing dexterity that you bring to the table with, uh, with this subject. We are uh, well over 20 minutes. And uh, I really thank you for your time and for being here. And uh, I think uh, our audience had a good time too. And so will the viewers. Viewers, if you're seeing this post live, drop in your comments Praveen and I would make sure that you get answers or we'd love to hear what you thought about it and if you like what you hear from the readings and from uh, the reviews pick up your copy at renewalism.com and uh, let us know what you think so on that note uh, I'm going to uh, say goodbye for the day but we meet here on the same page every evening at 9 p.m. with a new guest and uh, we look forward to meeting you again tomorrow. Thanks, Praveen. And uh, thanks, viewers. We'll sign off for now.